Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, 11 o'clock on, uh, on Friday, and we just finished practice two of spring ball. Uh, second uh, non-padded day. You have to have two uh, to start with, with just helmets and, and shorts. So we were able to get those done on Wednesday and Friday. A lot of energy, excitement out there. Uh, guys flying around, um, good communication, great bunch of, uh, of guys out there to work with. And um, and just excited about being back on the field. Uh, they'll have uh, the weekend off and then Monday will be a full padded practice and we kind of roll from there. So I know you guys have a lot of questions. So let's get to those. Start here Start. with John Kurtz. Yeah, hey, Chris, just wanted to ask about Skyler. <clears throat> Skyler, an update on just what he's able to do this spring. I know I saw the picture of him. Looked like he was maybe throwing it a little bit, but what, uh, what's he able to do? Yeah, we got some great news on Skyler. Uh, Monday before spring ball started, uh, he was cleared for uh, normal activity, uh, no tackling contact. We will have him do uh, all of our seven-on-seven -seven stuff, all of our one-on-one -on -one stuff. He's practicing uh, every day. He won't be in many team settings. He'll get into a few team settings that are non-contact team settings, but uh, I'm excited for him because he's able to throw to moving targets uh, this spring, and, and prior to that, we didn't think that was going to happen. And so uh, great news for Skyler and great news for, for our football team. I know it's really early, probably unfair even to ask this, but behind him, the, the battle for his backup job, how, how tight does that appear to be and what, what kinds of things will you be looking for there? Well, uh, you know, you have uh, Will Howard that played really good football and, and played a number of games. And so we're excited to have Will back and you can tell uh, how much the weight rooms helped Will. And then, uh, you know, between Jaron and, and Max and, and Jake, we have some young guys. Uh, Jaron's now kind of getting to be an older guy that I'm excited about the competition. And uh, uh, we feel really good about the depth we have at quarterback. And we'll see how it plays out. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. You bet. Kellis. Hey, Chris. Good to see you again. Um, good to see you, Kellis. No, no spring ball last year was kind of an albatross for you and everybody. I'm just wondering, does that make you change the way you approach things this time around, knowing that you didn't get it last time and maybe you're more fired up to get, get something special out of it? I think everybody's more fired up, Kellis. I, coaches and, and players, and uh, there's great excitement. It's, uh, it's so much fun to be out there with the guys. They're excited to be out there. You know, we go in the mornings, as you guys know, and so our kids are at the facility before 6 a.m. We have quick meetings. We have uh, a quick continental breakfast. We're out hitting the practice field by 7.15, and first whistle blows about 7.30, and, and we're going for a little over two hours. And um, once again, we've had two uh, helmet practices that have been really good. Guys have been excited, but uh, uh, you can tell, uh, you know, you, the energy because you miss the entire – uh, winter and spring last year. So it's a lot of fun to be out there with the guys. On, on Skyler, what, what's his past look like right now? Excuse me? On, on Skyler, how, how are his throws looking right now? Oh, it, it looks sharp. I mean, uh, popping out of his hand, and um, you'd have never thought he was even injured, to be honest with you. And I also want to ask about your new strength coach. What drew you to, to Coach True during the process, and why are you so high on him? Well, you guys will get a chance here in about uh, 20 minutes or half an hour to, to see what, what I saw in his interview. And uh, uh, the energy, the enthusiasm, uh, the love for the players, uh, the passion for, for what he does is, uh, in his professional strength and conditioning. Um, man, it, it, kids just gravitate to him. And uh, uh, he did a dynamite job at his interview. Um, he's had prior working relationships with three of our coaches and, and coach Wyatt and, and coach Malone at SMU, which a lot, a lot of you guys know, uh, but then also coach Ray at Oklahoma state. So um, he's familiar with our, with our, some of our coaches, which has enabled him to get in uh, with his feet running. And, and I'm excited because he's just got great energy and, and uh, just, I can see the way the guys have taken to him. Thanks, Chris. Go ahead, Derek. Yeah, Coach, when you're looking for a new strength coach, did you put more emphasis on how they can maximize performance or someone that can really set the culture that you want in your program? I think it's everything, Derek. Um, obviously, you want somebody that, that is uh, skilled at his craft. Uh, you want somebody that can build relationships. You want somebody that can challenge 
uh, you as coaches and, and challenge the team. Uh, and you, and you want somebody that can do a great job of building individual relationships. And, uh, I think I know that that's what we have in true. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm excited because just, we've only had true for about a week, but you, um, see the kids come out of the weight room, see them going in the weight room, the excitement that the guys have, see, you know, everything's just fresh. Everything's a little bit new. And um, that doesn't mean what we did before was any, was poor at all. Coach Dawson was phenomenal here for more than a decade. Uh, but it, you know, sometimes when you have that new uh, newness to things, kids are, are excited about that. And um, I can't wait for you guys to meet him. Yeah. And then in regards to some of your new transfer additions, you have, you have five that are there now. Um, they're probably swimming a little bit, obviously, the first couple of days, but are, are there any that are kind of grasping things quicker than the others? Um, you know, in two days, I, I'm very excited about all five, all five uh, fit right in with our guys. That's the number one thing when we brought these guys in and, and vetted these guys of would they make our locker room better? That was the number one thing that that was kind of a prerequisite for us as coaches was, was, were they going to fit in with our guys and with our team and they were going to make our locker room better. Uh, and all five guys do that. Um, they all have really good skill sets, you know, from a couple of DBs to a linebacker, to a D lineman, to a tight end. Um, they're, they're, they're going to be good, good football players here and playing an awful lot for us. So um, we'll kind of evaluate those guys once we get pads on, uh, but uh, excited about all five of them. Is there a couple of things to kind of, come to mind for you right now that you want to accomplish first and foremost this spring? Practice and play faster. Number number one and number two, practice. Practice faster, play faster. Um, create those habits uh, from a practice standpoint that we lost in the spring. And then in, in essence, in the fall, because you, you had 75% of your roster at most at any practice uh, because of COVID, um, you just didn't know who was going to be out there on a daily basis. And that's, that's what it was. So getting back to those practice habits that we had, uh, really in 2019, um, before all the pandemic, uh, and, and retraining our guys, this is how we want to practice. This is the expectation. This is the standard, uh, of how you do what you do. One thing is the way you do everything. And that's not only on the field, but it's off the field as well. And, uh, we've had a really good off season thus far, as far as, um, kids don't miss meals. They make every meal. Um, we're, we're not missing, uh, many classes, if any, not missing many tutors, those little things that, uh, um, allow you to be successful, uh, on the field. And I've never been around a team that does some knucklehead things off the field. And all of a sudden you're going to be really good on Saturdays. It doesn't work like that. And, uh, our kids have taken to that and our kids have, are, are holding each other accountable to that standard. And, uh, um, and, we're seeing that in through two days, but we have a long ways to go and uh, excited about where we're at. Thanks, Coach. Michael. Well, morning, Chris. Uh, in terms of roster listings, how did you arrive at the decision to move Wayne Jones to linebacker? Um, we think that serves Wayne best from a skill set standpoint. And um, Wayne is a much more efficient in the box player than he is um, playing what we would call top down from a safety down. And so we, we had long conversations as a staff about that. And it wasn't a knee jerk reaction. It was long conversations of with, we know Wayne's a really good football player. Now, where can we best utilize his skill set? And uh, uh, the more we looked and the more we watched uh, his film over the last two years, uh, when Wayne was playing really well, he was closer to the line of scrimmage. And so uh, it became a pretty simple thing for us of let's put a kid in a position where he can be successful and closer to the line of scrimmage is where Wayne needs to be. What way would you like to see him play at? And how does that contribute to the depth that you have at that position? Contributes greatly to the depth that we have at, at linebacker. And we, we'd like to see Wayne probably in that between 207 and 212 range, we want him to keep his speed and his quickness. And um, he's close to that. He's probably 207, 208 right now. And he could probably handle a few more pounds, but I don't want him to lose his speed and quickness. And, and in the big 12 with people spreading you out so much, it's not like you have to be a 225 pound kid to play uh, linebacker. You need to be able to run sideline to sideline and be able to tackle. And so um, it, it adds depth. Uh, it adds a, a guy that's had valuable starting experience 
uh, to go along with somebody like Daniel Green that's had valuable experience and Cody Fletcher who's got valuable experience and we have some uh, younger players as well as Eric Munoz who we brought in from a transfer standpoint that you guys know that watched us last year when when COVID hit us we took two linebackers to two straight road games and that's all we had was two linebackers going to two straight road games and one of them we had to play 90 snaps it's hard to hold up and so we we need the depth there. Thank you, Chris. Fitz. Go ahead, Fitz. Hey, Coach. Um, what a difference a year makes with that offensive line. You, you had so many questions across that group a year ago, and now how difficult is it for guys to kind of break into the depth chart or, or earn starting spots even if they were starters? Yeah, Fitz, I'm glad you brought that up because last year at this time, we had no idea what was going to happen on the offensive line and we were going to get it figured out in the spring and we didn't get it uh, a chance to even look at getting it figured out until August uh, and, and played an awful lot of guys there throughout the course of the season. Now you come into this spring ball and we have nine and 10 guys uh, that played significant snaps that were excited about the depth, excited about the competition. Uh, they can make each other better. We, we have the ability to move people around a, a, a little bit more if we wanted to or solidify some guys. And, and, you know, like, for instance, Christian Duffy played right side. He played left side. We're going to focus Duff on the right side. And, and um, Cooper Beebe played tackle. He played guard. We're hoping to be able to play uh, Coop inside. He's got to play a little bit outside, hoping to play him inside as well. And then we have a couple of kids that, you know, and Taylor Warner that we're excited about and Carver Willis and, and Sam Shields and Whit Mitchum. We have some young players that um, are, are pushing those guys. And so uh, really excited about where we're at with our depth and the fact that uh, those guys are going to push each other and we're going to be uh, much better off over a long, long haul of a season to play uh, upwards of nine, 10 guys. Uh, sticking with that, and uh, Connor Riley likes a really, uh, I don't know if this is the right word, athletic offensive lineman, maybe a little leaner that can uh, get out and move around and do some uh, really nice things, athletic things. How, how much did that play into the hiring of the new strength coach and, and what, what Connor wanted along that line? All oh, those are conversations <clears throat> that we're having. Um, one thing that uh, we probably haven't, been able to do quite yet because true's just getting his uh feet on the ground is being able to meet with each uh position coach to decide you know the skill set of the players he has what he's wanting to do but you're you're right we need athletic guys that can run and pull and and lead on plays with the amount of perimeter run game that uh we like to do as well as guards and centers and stuff polling and uh you know it kind of leads me into uh, we're so excited Noah Johnson came back. You have a center that uh, um, had one outstanding year, um, his senior year, and gets an opportunity to come back. And Noah uh, loves football, and he's a great leader because he holds people to the standard that he expects of himself. Uh, Noah does things the right way. Uh, Noah works hard, and, and you have to gravitate to him because uh, he's just got that infectious personality. And athletically, Noah is an extremely good athlete at center. And so, um, you know, that's a great one for, for everybody to look at and say, those are the type of uh, guys that we want into our program. I could ask you a lot of position group questions, but let, let me just finish up with running back. Uh, you lose Trotter, you gain back Irvin. Uh, how does that position look with uh, Deuce Vaughn in the mix, of course? Yeah, it's, it's different because, you know, you lost Harry, you lost Tyler, a couple of, of big bangers inside. Um, and uh, Joe Urban's an extremely talented kid that, you know, we saw in 2019, his ability to run inside and run outside. Uh, Keon Mosey just continued to improve uh, throughout the season. And uh, we expect him to be in the mix. Uh, obviously, Deuce is, is extremely special. Uh, and then uh, it, I'm excited to see where, what happens with Jacardier and Clyde. They, they both have the ability um, and uh, they just have to put it all together uh, and have consistent days and consistent practices so that we can count on those guys. And uh, we have uh, a number of, uh, of people there. We just got to see how the depth chart uh, uh, shakes out a little bit through the spring. Going to ask about moving someone to linebacker. Are, are there any other position moves that you're considering here in the spring? You know, no, the only other guy that, that when you talk about Wayne, 
uh, we also made the the wholesale change to to have Ryan Hennington yeah. play linebacker. You know, he started as a quarterback, moved over to safety last year, and now we're going to have him play linebacker. And, and and we did that for the same reason with Wayne. Uh, there were guys that played safety that in the Big 12 you need uh, linebackers that can really run that are 210, 215 pound guys that uh, uh, can cover and run sideline to sideline. And so Henny will even provide more uh, depth there uh, on special teams and at linebacker. But uh, I can't think off the top of my head any other position changes that we had. Okay. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Got uh, three hands raised. We'll finish off with those starting with Jackson. Hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask you first off about uh, Damian Alalio of Manhattan coming to K-State. He just won a state wrestling title. I just wanted to know your thoughts on getting a local kid and what he's going to bring, uh, not just at his position, but just as a competitive player overall. Well, you hit it on the head, competitor. Uh, I was able to watch Damian play a, a lot at Manhattan High because my son plays there this year, and I saw him come every Friday night and compete. Uh, and, and play really well and play physical, play in and play out. And Damian never takes plays off. And you can you now you, you can see why with the wrestling background. And so happy and so proud of him for uh, winning state and and um, having to fight through some adversity and being able to get that done. And he did that. And um, uh, Damian's going to have a, a, a tremendous career here. Uh, it's always hard as a, as, a, as a young player, as a true freshman, to come in uh, and have an immediate impact maybe on the field, but he'll have an immediate impact on our football team in, in just how hard he works, the, his competitive nature, uh, and, and we're counting on him being one of the leaders of that freshman class. And then I just wanted your thoughts on the wide receivers and how they've developed over the last you know, couple of months of the offseason and then now early uh, through spring. Yeah. Uh, Philip Brooks, Malik Knowles, go without saying, those two kids have played a lot of football, have had really good off seasons. Um, Sebastian's still recovering um, from off season in, uh, injury, so he'll be held out of spring ball. Uh, I'm I'm excited to see uh, a, a young man like Keenan Garber uh, step up uh, into a different and new role that that he has. And uh, Keenan has tremendous speed and it's the game is starting to slow down for him. And uh, I've seen some really good things out of him uh, the first couple of practices. And then we have some younger players that uh, um, we're excited about and, and we'll see how they, you know, progress during spring. But uh, we feel that uh, we have some good depth there. And then la last one for me, the opportunity to play on such a big scale to open your season uh, down in Dallas against Stanford. I just wanted to know maybe uh, if that was just an extra motivator for the guys to start off the season, if that's already something that you've talked about or how, how uh, the program's looking at that opportunity. Well, it's a tremendous opportunity. We're thankful to be able to have, have that chance to go play a great institution like Stanford. Uh, so much respect for Coach Shaw and uh, for our kids to be able to go down to uh, Dallas, where we have so many uh, alums and, and such a huge recruiting base for us, for us to be able to go down there uh, and showcase Kansas State University and Kansas State football. I know our guys have talked about it because when we mentioned it, we said we're going to open up the season uh, at AT&T Stadium. And I know that excited guys, but uh, uh, you got to put the work in before you get down there. And that's uh, what the start of spring ball is about. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. You bet. John. Yeah, Chris, I'm sure just getting back out there for everybody after the layoff, everybody's pretty giddy to get up and going. Uh, is this really as important a spring as you guys have had just because of everything that happened last year and not getting one last year? Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, all of them are important. All the falls are important. All the off seasons are important. But uh, when when you miss the amount of time that that we missed, you know, you 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 do have to start over a little bit. You do have to start from scratch and scratch and refocus um, your efforts and energies on the fact that we've got the spring ball. Let's take advantage of it. We had it taken away. 
a lot of things can be taken away from you very quickly in this game due to injury. Now we found out due to a, due to a pandemic, um, you know, you're blessed to have the opportunity to play this game. You're, you're blessed to have the opportunity to run out there with your brothers uh, and battle every day and, and compete and, um, and run around and, and don't take it for granted because it can be taken away from you in an instant. And uh, I've just been pleased with the energy that we've had the, these first couple of days and the, and the, the challenge that we challenge the guys after practice was, you know, we've had two great days, that, but they were T-shirts and helmet days. Now we're going to put the pads on on Monday. We have to have that same focus and same energy. And you mentioned, you know, maybe starting over in some ways. Is this a time in spring where you can do something changing, something major, philosophically, schematically, anything like that? I think just the opposite, John. We need to get back to the basics. We didn't block exceptionally well last year. We didn't tackle exceptionally well last year. We didn't get off blocks exceptionally well last year. We didn't um, do little things with with footwork and hand placement and simple technique things of running to the football with the proper angles on defense. All that stuff. That's what we need to get back to. The schemes will come as 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 spring ball and as summer and fall gets here. Our biggest emphasis is to be better fundamentally uh, throughout the spring, and, and that's going to be a, the daily challenge for the guys. Is you know we had one call on defense on both on both practice one and practice two, and that was for a reason because we just need to play faster, more aggressively, more physical. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. You bet. Last one here, Ryan. Hey, uh, Chris, you got me. You bet. Yes, sir. Uh, well, hey, my, my, I always got a few questions for you real quick. I guess my first one is uh, we kind of know where Skyler is on the depth chart, but does Will have a leg up? Is he is he entering the spring as number two, or is it completely even after Skyler? Well, it's a good – I would say he's got a, a leg up because he's played, whatever, seven or eight games. But um, we have wide open competitions at, at – so many positions and and i skyler i i think all of us envision him coming in and and uh, uh being the guy but we also know that he's got to compete and, and skyler knows that as well and uh that's what makes us better when you have multiple people at positions whether that's quarterback running back offensive line like we talked about the competition is going to make us all better and so i, I like that quarterback room you know you've got the, an older guy like skyler and then a bunch of younger players that are going to learn uh, the mental side of the game from from Skyler, but you know Skyler started started an awful lot of football games for us, and I can't wait to uh, see him cut it loose full go. Uh, and I know that those other quarterbacks are continuing to improve, and let's see how it plays out this spring. Uh, <clears throat> my second one would be, you know, we certainly know kind of what you guys lost in defensive line with with White and Drew. How how is that group look so far? We have depth and uh, we have competition. Uh, Tyrone Tallini has put on some great strength and, and uh, some weight. And um, Cartez uh, has put on some great weight and strength. And Eli Huggins, I think, is uh, ready to, to be that difference maker player. Um, Jalen Pickles continued to improve. We have a lot of young defensive ends that, that nobody knows about because Wyatt took the lion's share of the, of the reps, but be, you know, Felix Anaduke and Nate Matlock and uh, Brendan Mott. And, and uh, we have so many young players that uh, we're excited about uh, those guys because they've put on 15 to 25 pounds over the last year to get into that mode, to be ready to play in the big 12. And so uh, I like the depth we have in there. Do we have a wide or a drew right now from a difference maker standpoint, uh, time will tell, uh, but we have uh, a lot more versatility in there with the amount of guys.